Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the original Xbox, and specifically this. This is the pound HDMI cable for the original Xbox. Uh, this will be a review of this, but we'll get into that in a minute. But before we do any of that stuff, I just wanna say thank you to Ryan at Castlemania Games, who was cool enough to hook me up with one of these. That's actually why I don't have the box, he just gave me one in person. Uh, so I don't have that part to show you. But the one plus of that was I got to try this whole thing before I ever made the video. So today what I'm gonna be doing is talking about it, giving my opinion of it, all that stuff, and also just kind of explaining kind of what's necessary to understand before you go into this purchase, uh, assuming you end up deciding to purchase it. Um, so in the past, uh, I've done a lot of videos about how to get the best video quality out of something, and then I'll do comparisons of all these different versions of something. Um, and I still intend to do a video like that for the original Xbox. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I can't say with confidence that this cable is the way to go. So I don't wanna you know, have it be the end of the line looking thing saying this is the way to go. We'll get more to that you know, specific discussion at the end, but what I'm basically saying is I'm going into this video assuming that you already know the simple fact that with the original Xbox, the best video output that Microsoft put into it was component cables. This specifically right here is the Xbox High Definition AV Pack. This is how Microsoft intended for you to see it uh, under optimal settings. Um, and this happens to be the Japanese uh, Smoke Black Xbox that actually included this. I also have, just for shits and giggles, I have the Monster uh, component cable set here. Now, back in the day, I actually used a cheap component cable set for the original Xbox, thinking, eh, it probably doesn't make that much of a difference. Then I got that, and I realized, no, higher grade cables actually really do make a difference. And that's the case with both this and this. So the point I'm making to you is, I used the optimal settings for testing here. I used the absolute best that Microsoft had to offer for this machine in order to be able to compare it to this this device. So, before we go into specifics about this though, there's a few things you would need to know if you were going to get this, which is that the original Xbox is a little quirky when it comes to video output. Um, it has in it, a, you have to go into the settings of the console and you have to do this before you connect this cable. I want you to understand that, otherwise you could potentially run into some issues. So even if you have it hooked up through composite cables or you know some previous component cables, it doesn't matter, make sure your settings are as follow. Go into the dashboard, go to the settings area, then go to the video area, and then inside the video area, you have to adjust it to widescreen, provided you're using a widescreen television or monitor, and then adjust your resolutions accordingly. Now, personally, I enable 480p, 720p, and I actually leave 1080i disabled. Now, that's a personal preference. You can do whatever you want with that, uh, but I, I leave it disabled for two reasons. One, um, I found that the 1080i mode really doesn't look very good. It actually, in my opinion, looks a lot worse than the 720p mode, mostly because it has, obviously, uh, since it's 1080i, it has interlacing in it. So you'll notice additional lines in the video that aren't present in 720p. Technically, it's a higher resolution, yes, but does it actually look nicer? In my opinion, no. The other reason that I disable it is because it really doesn't matter. There's only six games. Out of the nearly 1,000 titles, there's six just six that actually support the 1080i mode. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, one of them being Enter the Matrix, which we'll get back to in a minute. Um, that's probably the most well-known of the six anyway. So make sure your settings are the way you like them, but you have to at least uh, enable 720p and 480p. Now, the reason you wanna do that before you connect this cable is that the Xbox dashboard actually only operates at 480i. Uh, I don't know why, but Microsoft, even though the console clearly could support higher resolutions, did not actually apply that to the dashboard, which is very unfortunate. Um, and that can be very problematic because, well, frankly, a lot of televisions and monitors, when you connect an HDMI cable, such as this one, to a, a monitor or a television running at 40i, it simply will not display anything. Uh, as in, the resolution is often not supported, which can be a huge problem. Now, I recently got a new television. The new TV actually supports HDMI running at 40i. My previous one did not, and my other, like, little smaller backup TV also does not. Uh, so it's, you know, some of my, one of my PC monitors does, another PC monitor doesn't. So that's kind of up to you. Um, so that can be a huge negative. And I have to say this right now to anyone outside of North America. Well. 
really I'm aiming this specifically at people in Europe and Australia. Microsoft kind of hosed you guys on the original Xbox. See, our original Xbox supported all these higher resolutions that I'm talking about. Same with the Japanese model, actually. But for whatever reason, Microsoft uh, locked the original Xbox in Australia and Europe at 480i. I don't know why. Um, so the, you, in order to actually use the higher resolution modes, you have to mod the console, which is easy enough to do these days. But just be aware of that serious extra step that anyone in Europe or in Australia would have to take if they wanted to take advantage of this cable or component cables. You would have to do that as well. So be aware of that extra step. Um, and I'm, you know, as an American, and Microsoft being an American company, I apologize, although I had nothing to do with it, obviously. Still, I don't know why they did that. The, the good news is, though, at least the PAL versions of games do support the high resolution modes. They just can't access them unless your console is modified. Don't ask me why. I, but make sure you do that. So assuming you've done that, and North America, nobody has to do that, it's not required. Um, just, you know, like I said, go in and make sure the settings are adjusted beforehand. Then you can connect this cable. Now, moving on from that, the good news here uh, is once you're past all that stuff, the vast majority of original Xbox games support at least 480p, meaning if you pop it in, it's gonna work. And even if you can't get the dashboard to work on your particular television, if the game supports 480p or higher, once you put the disc in and the, you know, the game boots, your TV will pick it up. So you won't have to deal with that issue. Do you follow me on that? You may not be able to like, address the, you know, the hard drive to check out the memory or you know, the music or any of that stuff that's in there, but the game itself will actually boot up provided it supports the uh, appropriate resolution. And the, like I said, the vast majority of games out there do, so you won't necessarily have that problem. Um, there's a, a really seriously high chunk of games that support 720p, a much, much higher percentage that support 480p, and then unfortunately there is a percentage that are locked at 480i. The good news, however, for that is that if you're into the whole Xbox modding thing, a substantial number of those 480i games that are locked at that have 480p patches. So then they too would also be able to run with this thing. Granted, not their native original disc-based version, uh, either a pirated burned version or a version running off the hard drive. But anyway, there, there are routes to play those particular games with this cable is basically the point I'm making. Uh, so those are the little quirks you need to know before even entering the concept of getting this cable. So now moving on to the cable itself, this is actually the version two of this. And I wanna thank people who watched my Dreamcast pound cable for pointing out a few of these things. Um, the pound cable for both the Dreamcast and the Xbox has had two iterations at the time I make this video. Uh, the original one, like my Dreamcast pound cable is hardwired uh, and it's the V1. There is a V2 that's upgraded. This happens to be the V2 version of the original Xbox cable. Now I don't have the V1, so I can't compare it directly. My understanding is the picture quality off of this thing is a little bit better than the original version, but the other things that are about it that are nice is it has three additions. One is this little light on there. Now that matters because if the light comes on, that means it's securely connected to the console and it's for sure working. Uh, the second is that uh, it actually is not hard modded or hardwired. You can disconnect the HDMI cable. Now that's a good thing because uh, if this cable breaks for any reason, you can easily replace it. You can upgrade it with your own higher end cables, or if you want to, you can connect cables like the M cable, which trust me, I took advantage of that. Um, side story real quick, the M cable is a high grade uh, HDMI cable that has a processor in it that uh, creates an anti-aliasing effect, creating much smoother, nicer gaming experiences while also upscaling the resolution of a game. It may sound like magical bullshit because I thought the same thing at first, but that cable is amazing. I did a video on it, feel free to watch that. Um, Highly recommend that thing, actually. Uh, so I can connect it to this and test it you know, for those purposes. The other thing it has is this USB port. Now, I had no idea what this was for at first. Um, did a little research in it. Now, it turns out some of the later versions of the Xbox do not support enough, their low power models, and they don't have enough power to actually run this thing. So in the event you get the cable and your Xbox won't recognize it, it's possible you have a version of the Xbox that can't give this power. So that USB port is specifically for the function of connecting it to another USB-based device or an outlet and just giving it the extra power necessary to run the cable. So be aware of that. So those are nice improvements over a version. I'm comparing it to the Dreamcast cable but because they're both by pound, but at the end of the day, I can tell those are improvements. So how would it actually compare? Well, like I said, what I wanted to do was test it with the cream of the crop way Microsoft recommended it, which is this specific pack right here. Now, when you do that, 
um, ideally, they should look exactly the same. That should be the function. That should be the intended goal of this device at its current price point, is it shouldn't be necessarily any better, but it shouldn't be any worse. And and my final thesis on that, or my final opinion, if you will, is really that it's it's definitely more convenient, but it, it does change the picture. Not by much. Um, basically, th this image that comes off of Component is brighter. And that's about the only difference I even noticed, is that this is a little bit brighter and therefore makes it somewhat easier to see certain details of the game that this one hides. Um, not that this, it's like really obvious or anything, like I'll show you footage and you'll still probably for the most part not even really notice. But again, the footage has been captured. I had certain capture issues when getting footage. And then at the same time, it's been edited, it's been compressed, it's been thrown up on YouTube. So you're not gonna notice those subtleties. So when I just ran it through my television, what I can tell you is the component version is just a little bit brighter. Now, is that a deal breaker? No, but at the end of the day, I, I would really want them to be aiming for a cable that didn't introduce problems that didn't exist there originally. That should be the goal. I don't necessarily expect them to create one that does upscaling, though that would be nice, especially because the dashboard itself doesn't usually work depending on your monitor. It would be nice if at the very least it did artificial upscaling from 480i to 480p at the very least, but then again, that would add to the cost of it. And that's one of the biggest pluses of this device is that it's not particularly expensive. Um, so at the end of the day, I gotta give it massive props for convenience because it's very easy to use. Um, and it's personally, and now in 2018, I've migrated everything to some sort of HDMI input. Having to run with anything else is annoying. So this solves a major console problem for me. But at the same time, the reason I didn't want to do this big comparison of everything is that this is the only option currently. There is the Hyperkin model, and I want to try that out. I don't know how it runs. If the Hyperkin model does exactly what the component cables do and gives exactly the same image, then it's going to win by default. But I don't have that, so I can't say. So when I get it, I'll maybe revisit this whole concept. But in the short term, what I can tell you about the pound cable is it's, it's good, but it's not perfect. Um, and I would hope that they would make certain changes to it, uh, just to, at the very least, keep it on par. But, but then you get into the territory of the M cable. Now this is really only for the super nerdy among us who care about the idea of connecting it to something like the M cable just to see what it would do. But I noticed, especially when you run it through the M cable, 720p on the original Xbox running through this thing, then through the M cable, ooh, that's pretty. It's, 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 I know it's running darker than it should, but aside from that, it's pretty. Um, and that's definitely how, at least for now, I intend to run the original Xbox. So I, it might sound like I'm waffling a little, a little bit here. It's, it's hard to explain this. What I, I guess what I'm saying is, this is how I'm going to use the Xbox, even knowing full well that it's not quite right. Hoping that the Hyperkin one, or maybe even some other future competitor, does get it to be just right. Um, but yeah, the convenience though, the convenience of having this integrated into my system the way it is, especially with M cable integration, is definitely why I'm gonna go that route. So there's that. Now let's talk a little bit about some comparison footage. Uh, bringing back Enter the Matrix here, this is the prime example game to test to see how all these different cable hookups work. Um, a, because it's one of the few games that supports 1080i, but B, because it also has this like white background for character rendering, because you know, it's supposed to be the Matrix. So it actually is great for comparison because you can just see how jagged lines and everything look. So what we're gonna do here is just bear with me. We're gonna run through a bunch of these. Now again, I wanna refresh people's memory because I did mention this once casually. I recorded this intro in all four different resolutions, 40i, 40p, uh, 720p, and 1080i in uh, all three configurations. One being component, one being the pound cable with the default HDMI cable, and one being the pound cable with the M cable. Um, and so what we're gonna do is just kind of go one by one here and just take a look. So first up is, we're just gonna look at component. This is component running through 480i. Now, uh, component through 40i didn't really have any recording issues because it's used to running at resolutions like that. Uh, but when you switched over to the HDMI versions, uh, uh, the pound cable running with uh, just its default cable at 40i starts to get a little wonky. Um, 
And then I, and I learned more about the M cable as I proceeded doing this. When you run the M cable through it, I noticed the M cable just straight up turns off. It doesn't do anything. If anything, it actually looks worse. Um, the M cable was simply not designed for interlaced content, which I found out more about as I went on too. But 480i through the M cable looks really bad. Um, so all the more reason that when I, when I use this thing in the future, uh, if I'm playing any sort of game that runs at 40 i I'm going to definitely see if there's a patched version first because it doesn't shine until you get out of 4 i So moving on to component though, you can see now the component running at 4 p Now, uh, again, this will be the default imagery for most games. Um, that's the best it's usually going to look. Uh, however, you can then connect it to the pound cable and you know see how that looks. Uh, but also, very obviously, this is where the M cable begins to show what it can do, uh, as you can see here. Now, some of these subtleties might be too much, especially because, again, you're looking at captured footage that had some capture issues and has some rendering issues, and of course it's been re-encoded and all that stuff, but hopefully you're getting a sense of it. Now, where I think we start to really move up is when we go into 720p, you get the component 720p, and you know it, it looks good, but then the HDMI one, you, I mean, I guess you can kind of tell it does kind of come down a bit, but then you run into the, uh, the M cable. Now, personally, this is the actual setting that I would leave the M cable at all the time. I would, if I was gonna use this thing, I would be running the pound cable with the M cable configured at 720p at all times. Um, the only catch to that is in this particular capture, for some reason, it added a whole bunch of wavy lines that don't exist in the actual video. Why? I don't know. I was running into uh, issues with capturing. I think that's a coincidence. I don't think it had anything to do with the actual cable. Um, and then we get into the 1080i mode. Now this was a, this was interesting just to me because I'm super nerdy, but you get the component one. Again, this is one of the only six games that supports this. That's all fine and good. Uh, and then you can see the pound cable version, which looked, you know, fine. And then we get to the M cable version, which actually looked pretty bad. And the reason it looked pretty bad is I didn't know this until I was testing this. Um, it turns out the M cable does not support interlaced resolutions. Um, like it shuts off, it doesn't do anything. Um, usually if, if it takes 480p or 720p content, it will clean it and scale it to 1080p. But it detected 1080i and actually shut off and just passed 1080i straight through. Um, so that's more for people interested in the M cable than they are specifically this one. But I figure there's a whole bunch of you who probably will care because a lot of retro gamers are starting to pick up on the M cable now and mixing it with the pound cable, those are the kind of results you get. Um, so I hope that's somewhat interesting and somewhat educational to a lot of you. Uh, yeah, I guess that at the end of the day, that's kind of my final thoughts is it's good. It's not great, it needs, there are some improvements necessary and I would really like it not to introduce errors that didn't exist originally. That said, it's not bad, and I just want to see a basis of comparison outside of component itself. I want to see other HDMI competitors and what they can do. Because if, if they can make it just the same as the component box, they've already won, in my opinion. That said, though, it's still the way I'm actually going to hook up my Xbox, just because that convenience, man, it's, especially when you're, you do get a lot of the benefits back when you run it through the M cable, that's personally how I'm going to do it. Uh, so if you're interested in this or anything else that Castlemania Games sells, please feel free to check out the link in the description. You can go out there. Um, although I think he's not necessarily going to be selling these anymore. I think he's, but I also think he is going to start getting the Hyperkin one. So keep an eye out. I'm sure I'll do a review on it at some point. If you are interested in this one specifically, I think you can also get it at like Amazon. Um, you can take a look at that. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Once again, thank you very much to Ryan for hooking me up with this in the first place. And I'll see you all later.